Hello, welcome all. Hope my audio is clear to everyone. Thank you. But I think my screen is not visible, right? Okay, you can see my uh, screen. Fine, because I cannot see it. That's it. So, hello and welcome to day two. So today we carry on and before we carry on, let me tell you that gardening is a very infectious hobby and is also addictive and it will let, make your neighborhood go green. So let's go for it. And one more thing, gardening, the results needs patience. So you please exercise caution as it will test your patience. But once you pass this test, you'll enjoy the fruits of your labor. Literally, in your hands, you'll have fruits, vegetables, flowers, whatever you grow. But failures initially, our ratio of failure is very high. Now, today's workshop, we will be learning how to take care of our plants and grow some common vegetables and proper advice on the preventive and curative action to be taken in future with respect to plant care and growth. Now, if you are first time at gardening, you, I would just advise you to start with a small pot and single vegetable. And the most simplest vegetable to grow is tomato and chili. You can start with those, have fruitful results and expand your passion, expand your garden to have other things. But we have to be very patient because it will take a couple of months to start giving results and you should not give up taking care of the plant. Sometimes you sow seeds and you'll be daily washing it. The new offspring or the new shoot will not be visible for months. Now, before we start, some reminders. Start small, start with one or two plants. Plan ahead. Identify proper place where it is you get sufficient sunlight. Select vegetable seeds of the plant. Correct vegetable seed, hybrid variety may not give the yield. And sometimes we buy vegetables from the market and we take out the seeds, but that may not be successful in growing into plants. So get the correct variety of seeds. Be careful of the season you are sowing the seeds. If the season is not proper, if you sow a winter crop in summer, the result may not be there. Water at any point should not be accumulated in your pot, so good drainage is necessary. Adequate manure, adequate water, and create a garden calendar which gives you the idea exactly when to sow and what to sow. Keep eye on pests and timely harvest is necessary for your plants. Lack of access to resources should not be a cause. A garden in every home can make things easier for conservancy. And with the inflation, and especially everybody knows the various memes and jokes that's going around for the prices of lemon, we all know. So sometimes if we have something handy in our garden, it's always welcome and nice. And apart from it, that, it gives us immense pleasure and happiness when we get the results that we want. Now, gardening can be possible anything. If you have a terrace, you can have small pits lined up on your terrace. On the ground, the first layer of the bricks below the soil should be a waterproof or even plastic sheets, the big plastic sheets that you get, you can put that just so that the water doesn't seep and damage the floor. You can have any type of containers. These containers that you see are water bottles, the 15 liter water containers that you have. So any container can be used. Grow bags can be used. So anything can be used, recycled, reused to grow plants, saving environment and 
doing our bit of sustainability for the planet. So now what the question everyone has on your mind, what can we grow on a terrace garden? We can grow everything. Yes, literally we can grow everything. French beans, chilies, tomato, brinjal, okra, lime are the easier to grow. Lime or lemon will take a longer time to fruit. Others, tomato, three months, chilies, four to six months, brinjal, the fruits are there, okra, the fruits are there in three to four months, but lime takes three to four years. But if you get the ready-made plant from the nursery, the fruits will be faster. You can also try cucumber, ridge gourd, and bottle gourd. Root vegetables like potato, onion, radish, carrot, groundnuts can also be grown, but they require a larger area for them to grow. So that's the, my balcony, one of my balcony of the various house which I used to grow plants. So requirements, first of all, the requirement is a pot. Now pot of any size, pot of any material is fine. It can be a clay pot, a terracotta pot, or a plastic, cement, concrete, metal cast, any pot, planters, anything which is sturdy, flexible. Avoid the thin and stiff ones that become brittle with cold or age. And uh, but and so, uh, once more we have a uh, problem with that is uh, clay or terracotta pots are damaged by freezing and thawing. So if your weather in your place is too cold or something, avoid using that. This is a broken pot. The pot that we use to drink water, matka, that has been used in the house and discarded, then it's broken and sown to grow plants. That's my personal one. So what uh, we get these bags, paper bags, yes, that can be used. We have these water containers that can be used, grow bags. You can make this. Yes, I have taught kids to make planters like this. This is for uh, initial sowing of the seeds till the time the first two leaves comes and then we transplant. Then we can use this carton box, which we get from the Amazon and all the delivery stuffs. We can use the bottles for the succulent and small plants and herbs. When we do herb gardening, I'll show you to grow plants in bottles like this. So literally everything can be used to grow plants. The size of the container, we have to keep in mind, is easier to grow in large containers than in small ones because it's empty and ample of space for the uh, it will be ample of space for the roots to expand and plants to get nutrients from. That's because large containers, as I told you, hold more soil, more soil, more nutrients, more moisture, and resist rapid temperature, temperature fluctuation, hence that's better for the plants. Root-bound plants, which have been filled up every square inch of the soil available, dry out rapidly and won't grow well. Choose a large pot or a tub for mixed planting, one that offers enough root space for all the plants to grow. If you're growing, uh, growing multiple things, then that's to be uh, taken care of. Large colored containers keep the soil cooler than dark containers. Thing to think about if you're having plastic containers. So it's the material size and drainage that needs to be considered while selecting a container of the pot. The determines is the shape and size of the root system. As a tuber, we need the deep roots at one, so we need deep containers. Perennial or an annual needs more big shrubs. It's the rapidity of growth needs a big container. So what size of the container are we looking at? Eight to 12 inch for leafy green herbs. 12 inch for the annuals and perennials, gars, vines, climbers grow well. So rice bags, large grow bags of five or 10 kg or bigger is perfect to grow that. Drainage, as I said yesterday or two, the drainage holes are essential. So whatever container you choose, make drainage holes so that the water does not stay on the roots. Without drainage, soil will become waterlogged and plants may dry. The holes needs to be not too large, but there must be enough so that the excess water drains out. And we can always use our creativity, imaginations, and combine the upright and trailing plants, edible flowers for pleasing and colorful effect, and make a wonderful garden. Now, one more most important thing that we uh, require for plants is the sunlight. 
as I said yesterday, minimum four hours of sunlight is required. If less than that, very few plants grow, so we can go for the herbs, but not for vegetables. So all the plants that are mentioned over here, the beans, mustards, beetroot, radish, mint, celery, basil, mostly the herbal variety can be grown in unlike indirect sunlight where we have less than four hours of daily direct sunlight. When I say four hours of sunlight, I mean direct sunlight. Six hours, spinach, coriander, fenugreek, beans, amaranth, parsley, and turmeric. For all types of birds, lettuce, okra, brinjal, tomatoes, we need at least eight hours of sunlight. Six to eight hours would suffice, suffice not exactly eight, but yes. You can try with four hours of sunlight also. So again, a revision of the previous sheet. Green leafy vegetables, remember four hours of sunlight, herbs four hours, veggies eight hours, creepers eight hours of sunlight required for proper growth. Yesterday, I showed you how to prepare the pot, how to prepare the potting soil. I have put on the group today, the composition, what exactly is required to grow the potting, to make your own potting mix. So this is the ruffle. Roughly the example, cocoa peat, as I showed you yesterday, and those who were not with me yesterday can do it once more. That's the cocoa peat we get from the market. It's best to get it from the market. This is a one kg uh, block. You soak this in five kg of or five liters of water. It will expand and it will crumple into powder like this. So cocoa peat, compost, compost, uh, you can make the compost at home. It has also been, I had a previous workshop on composting around a month or so back, and that had been uh, a, a link to the same has been put up on the group. So you can go to the composting, how to make your own compost, or you can buy it from the market. And you require the local black or red soil, whichever is locally available in your region. For annuals and perennials, the Ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1, all in equal proportion. But for karela, palak, etc., if the amount of soil is left, it is perfectly fine. What you need is more of compost. So different type of soil, the most uh, useful soil that we have or the most uh, convenient type of soil that you require is a gloomy soil. It's why? Because it's light and fluffy, good drainage, retains moisture. Wheat free and good amount of moisture, uh, good amount of manure that is fertilizer should be there in your soil. So, filling the pot, I showed you yesterday. Put the so this is an example how we fill up the pot exactly the way we take the sugarcane, bulk, gas, coir, stone, pebbles, pistachio shells, anything, and line the bottom. Then fill the soil, mix with cocoa peat and home mode compost, six to nine inch, and then we plant it that was demonstrated yesterday. Then we sprinkle seed on the soil and cover one fourth inch of layer with soil, sprinkle water. If you're buying a plant from the nursery, soak the roots of the sapling in water for a few minutes to remove the excess soil. Place the sapling in the container and gently spread the root without damaging it, caring with very love and affection in all the direction and make sure it is firm, mulching. Now, mulching of the pot with dried grass, organic material. Yesterday, I told you all, uh, told you all mulch, mulching, and there was a question. So, mulching can be done with anything. So, if you have a pot, you can mulch it with a banana. Skin or orange skins. So our soil is there set up and you can just cover the soil with the waste like this. It can be the skins of fruits that you consume for the day. Or it can also be a minute.
So mulching is covering of the pot with grass cutting, dry leaves, or also with uh, skins like this. It can be a banana skin. It can be an orange skin or pill. So all this decay and decompose on the top of the soil, providing micronutrients and nutrients to the plant, as well prevent the soil from drying up in the hot weather and reduce evaporation and it retains the moisture in the soil. So mulching is covering of the pot with grass cutting or dry leaves, which retains or reduces loss of moisture due to evaporation. It also helps in aeration as earthworm keeps coming to the surface to release excreta and inhale oxygen in effect killing the soil. Now, earthworms are welcome only in grounds, not in the pots, especially it is in your house and the balcony. I don't prefer it. And uh, further, uh, the nuisance that they cause in our house and it, uh, it's creepy. Basically, it's creepy and our family members may not like it. Though we may like it. We may have no objection because we love soil and we love plants. Uh, but yes, what happens in the pot, a small size pot that we have like 10 to 12 inch or something. So what will happen? The earthworms will take away the nutrients, they will, uh, they will dry off, they will eat away the nutrients from the soil and hence it will prevent you from preparing, uh, prevent the plants from getting the nutrients that will be taken off by that. Now the size of the container, so different types of fruits and foods are portrayed over here. So it's necessary, uh, it's not necessary, you can just have a look at this and make a note if you want. I'll just pause a bit over here about the different size of pots that we require for growing different kinds of vegetables. Now, what's necessary? Watering. Watering regularly is a very must. In summer, your garden requires twice watering day. Now, what is the best time to water? The best time to water is before sunrise and after sunset. That is the best time to water your plants. After the sun is up in the, up in the sky, when the sun is up in the sky, uh, what happens? Like uh, the evaporation starts happening. So water is there you water the soil and evaporation happens. So that creates a suction force. So that's not advisable and that's not beneficial for the plants. Hence, we don't require that. So in winters, you can just press the soil and how much water, if they, when do you know when to water the plants? So in summer, of course, because the weather is hot, the sun is hot and a lot of evaporation is taking place. So it's better. Uh, that you water twice a day, but in winters, you can just press the soil with the back of your hand to check the moisture and water accordingly. But if you don't like dirtying your hands with soil, so what you can do, you can put a stick, to put a stick or do a stick test. If there are any ladies or who have been accustomed to baking, they know the stick test. When we are baking a cake or something, we put a stick and toothpick, in fact, to check whether the cake has come up fine or not. So similarly for soil, we put a stick and if the soil sticks to the store, uh, if the soil sticks to the so stick, we don't require watering. And rainy season, no watering at all. So in winters, you can just press the soil with the back of your hand to check the moisture and water accordingly. If it appears dry and the soil doesn't stick to your hands, you need watering. And I would advise you not to water the garden in rains. And even one day after the rain, as excess water drains away all the nutrients from the soil. In India, we have the tendency of watering the plant and all the water comes out from the pots and it is leaking and seeping from the balconies, which is not at all advisable because as the water comes out, it passes through the soil and comes out watering, washing off all the nutrients of the soil. Now, why I'm stressing so much on watering? Because 90% of the plants die because of overwatering rather than underwatering. If there's underwatering, you'll see the leaves drooping and you immediately come to know that water is required by the plants. The plants are thirsty. But in case of overwatering, we are harming the plants more. So plants are very delicate and we can't give them a bucket full of water altogether. We have to slowly sprinkle water, remember that. 
We can do this by making holes in the cap and bottle, especially when the water, when the seeds are just sprouting and the plants are very young. Or with the help of water guns, watering cans, or any other means which we can carefully water the plant. So that's a bottle, that's a small bottle of 200 ml, and the cap has been pregged with alpins to make holes. So that's what you can recycle, you use, and make a small, nice bottle out there for sprinkling water. So take any bottle, make several holes in the cap with the help of a rounder or a screwdriver. Your watering instrument is ready to use. Now the best time, as I tell you, is before sunrise and after sunset. As root grows after sunset, plants take in nutrition and moonlight and moisture is required for absorption of this nutrients. Watering in the evening also reduces loss, water loss due to evaporation. Manure. Following ergonomic manure are recommended. Cow dung, bio, compost, Jivanrit and Ghanamrit, which you can get from the market. You can also get the nurseries of Golden Eco Village. Pesticide, Gomutra, Dasharpanik, Nimark, Neem Oil, Jivanrit, Neem Oil plus soap, Neem Oil solution, chili pepper spray are different type of organic pesticides you use if your plants or leaves of the plants are attacked by the pest. We can also have sticky strips. We can grow repellent, uh, pest repellent plants. For example, marigold plant, if planted with the herbs, lemon grass, cilantro, fennel, they have a, a smell and odor. Now, the odor of this plant deter pests, deter insects. We keep pollen and nectar producing plants around, so they be scums. Organic pest spray, 3 ml of neem oil plus one drop of herbal shampoo or dishwashing liquid and one liter of water. Why is this required? We spray this in the evening. Now, why I say one drop of herbal shampoo or dishwashing liquid is why? Because oil, as you all know, is not soluble with water. So to make the oil soluble in water, we need to add neem oil and water. Um, to mix the neem oil and water, we need the dishwashing liquid or the herbal spray. Now, how to start? Make a list of all the vegetables and herbs and flowers you want to grow. Prioritize your list and choose the plant suitable for the season to the environment of the place you are staying. Draw out a plan for your space and know number of containers according to the space that you have. Place a container in such a space that you have the most sun. Calculate the sun, the soil and requirements and mix the ingredients. Decide the type of containers and sizes as per the size of the plants. Fill the containers with soil and wait for a week. Plant the selected seeds, maintaining spacing. Make sure regular watering and fertilizer are taken care of. Now, when we are planting the seed, the seeds need to be placed at equal to two or three times the width of the seed. It's better to see, plant the seed to allow shallow than too deep. If too deep, the seed would find it hard to germinate and rise up. After watering the soil, the soil still feel crumbles in your hand. The pot must never be flooded with water. Ensure that the pots have holes at the bottom for excess water to drain. Use good quality potting mix that have a good amount of nutrients to support germination and give plant a strong start. When watering samplings, saplings that small, ensure to add water at the base of the sampling instead of adding to the leaves. At any point of time when we are pouring water over the plants or watering the plants, it should always be to the base. We have the tendency to pour the water over the plants. So what happens? The leaves get wet. And many a times the leaf have droplets of water on it. And when the sun shine off it, evaporation of this water takes place and the leaves get burned. Yes, the leaves get burned. And sometimes you have the yellow burnt leaves on your plants and there are queries many a times I receive why is my leaves burning? Why are the leaves burning? Leaves are burning because while watering you have left water on the leaves. Now keep the pot in direct sunlight such that the samplings grow, the saplings grow straight and tall. The more the leaves touch the soil, the higher is the chance of some infection to the leaves, which may spread to the plant. Note that since the containers are heavy, once they are filled with soil, it's very difficult to move. So have a proper space beforehand so that you don't have to move the container uh, frequently. Afternoon shade will reduce the amount of moisture in the plant. So you 
try to place the pots in the place where you have got a lot of morning sunlight but shade during the hottest part of the day if possible it's not always in our hand but if possible place it in such a way caring for our garden water prudently never let the soil dry out completely mulching and weeding regular addition of organic fertilizer and pest control so some of the plants that we can grow in the house are the elephant ears or the colocasia the leaves are used also and so is the root then we can have the digestive magai pan how to this is the chavli or the long beans when we sometimes get it from the market we find that the uh, it's ripe enough and the seeds are there so gently very carefully take out the seeds once the seeds are taken out bifurcated now the seeds are the ready seeds these are ripe and these are this have started maturing these are yet to mature so the seeds that are sown so this is how it will grow so easy to grow it in your garden ground nut so sometimes we buy it from the market and we find it shooting so simply put it in water it's put in water and from the water it starts rooting and shooting so that's how you see and then it's time to pot it so once it starts rooting and shooting so simply place it in water enough of roots are developed plant it in the soil that's it so that's the leaf of groundnut yellow color leaves of groundnut so i hope this was useful if any queries we can do it in the chat so from the small i go to the previous i just in like this is a cap of a bottle filled up with water in which i sow that peanut and that peanut or the groundnut shoots sprouts and i place it in soil in a small container and then i transfer into a big container and there i get the flowers and once the flowers dry off i dig up the soil and i get the peanuts similarly with about sometimes when we get it from the market we get uh, the matured ones the one with mm -hmm. red seeds so just dry it simply put it in soil and it starts growing so this is how it grows we get yellow if you see over here my cursor visible yellow flowers and it starts growing that's the plant now what's demonstrated in this video if you see i'm pinching it so once it grows what happens the offshoot offshoots come see it's growing right the offshoot is coming i don't want the offshoots because what happen in that the leaves will be growing right so all this offshoots i pinch it off and cut it off i just let it grow in the straight line otherwise it will not bud and the flowers will not come so that i pinch it off and put it back in the soil it's put back in the soil fine right? so i want it to grow in one single stem and any offshoot coming lateral branches coming i pinch it off i pinch off the any lateral branches i don't want to let it grow laterally because then it will be only leaves all the way and the fruits will not come i don't know somehow the audio is not there hence you can not hear it but that's what i explained it that's what i have shown in this video so you see how the flowers come and that's a fruit it will eventually there's another flower and the fruit attached to it and eventually it will grow into the fruit that's the right fruit that we get that gives us immense pleasure then you can let one of them ripe this is how it will ripe from green to yellow let it turn to yellow and 
it will burst open. Once it bursts open, you get seeds like that. These seeds are again to be planted to get another plants of any variety. On the green ones, you can just cut it off and use it. So that's my small balcony where I had it. Yeah, the marigold flowers, which you know, and brinjal, another very simple plant to grow is the brinjal. So that's the brinjal plant. Let's use capsicum. That's chickpea. That's mint, chili. I showed you the pot matka had broken and sown. So that's a chili plant and I have got a chili here. If that's visible. Tomatoes, we have in plenty. That's one of my attendee of the workshop who had this African chili. She was from Africa and she got it and she sowed and she got a nice produce of the African chilies in Pune, Mumbai, in Pune, Maharashtra and tomatoes. Oh, that's it for the day. One sec. So some of the other common plants that you can grow. Now, since today's session is about vegetable gardening. So that's what we have done. So another very simple plants to grow is cucumber. So cucumber, how do we grow? We sow cucumber seeds overnight before sowing them. Use a good quality of potting mix with one part of soil composed, as I told you, the thumb. Use thumb and make a 5 mm depression in the soil to sow the cucumber seeds. Cover with loose soil and water gently. Let the seed germinate and at least five, six true leaves to appear and then se transfer the sapling to a bigger pot. Now, in case of vegetable, it's always advisable to uh, sow the seeds. Uh, to sow the seeds in the small containers or the planters, the small black color planters that you get. And then, or you can make planters out of newspaper in the first slide, one of the first slides I showed you how to make. Maybe if we have time in next workshop or some, I'll show you to how to make planters out of newspaper. And then once it is in, this whole thing can be transplanted back into a book. Uh, the whole soil along with the small saplings can be transplanted into a big pot. Now, expose the plant to direct sunlight at least six to eight hours in a day. Manual pollination by hand may be required to ensure fruiting. Now, sometimes we have, we get lots of flowers, but the fruits are not there. So if that case happens, the fruits are not there. Hand pollination, take two flowers, touch it with each other and do hand pollination and harvest the fruit when ready. Brinjal is also, now go for the indigenous variety, which is there in your uh, that is available in your local market. Don't go for the fancy varieties, which is not local to you. But once you have got the harvest, then it is perfectly fine. You can get the seeds. Let one, just as I showed you in pencil, let the fruit ripe on your plant. And once it is ripe, then you can use the seeds 
and the main the second type time the seeds may not the fruits may not be so nice but the third or the fourth generation of food will be indigenous to your area to your house and it will give you a superb yield so now soak brinjal seeds also overnight and sow them sow them in a well drained soil prepare a potty mix of 30 30 and 10% of uh, uh sand river sand but that's not necessary if available you can use it otherwise one is to one is to one one person soil one one part soil one part compost and one part cocoa peat once the sapling which is a height of 5 to 6 transplant it to potting you can accompany them with the tomato cabbage and broccoli so they are all companions when they are all together they don't uh, uh they are pests they are not affected by pests and attack and everything after the plant starts flowering control the amount of water given daily fold the flowers and gently rub them to induce pollution that because see uh, i don't know if it's visible this purple color over here if you can see my cursor follow my cursor that's the flower from which the fruit will come so this flowers need to be hand pollinated in many cases in balcony gardening especially if there are no bees if you are getting bees and flies no worries but if you are not getting bees you'll have to hand pollinate in your balcony that's from my balcony yes chili as i showed you very simple so you can procure the seeds of the dried red chili in your kitchen from the local market we get green chilies let it become red and let it open take the seeds and the red chili either the ones you use for tempting or the chili flakes anything but the chili flakes or the tempting chili red chili you get may not be local to your place may not be suppose you are in mumbai and the chili that you use comes from chennai or any south india guntur chilies i think that's generally what we get it may not be uh, local to your area so better get the green chilies you get in the market let it go become red or buy it from the nursery so we again the soil is the perfect one is to one is to one now press the chilies gently into the soft soil the chili seeds are very small papery it may so we need to with the finger press it on the soil cover it with mulch hay aluminum foil plastic cling water spray water don't because if you pour water the seeds will be washed away so don't water sprinkle water when set of five leaves appear transfer into a bigger pot height of 16 to 20 inches water daily till the plants flower reduce the frequency of watering when flowering happens this goes true for most of the flowers plants also harvest chilies when fruited so this is it so the size of the hole that we dug for any plant should be double the size of the seed fine so these are the different stages of growth for a chili plant spinach again potting mix well drained loamy soil and rich so spinach seeds gently in the row or block of 1 to 1.5 feet apart so in a small pot of say 12 inch plant 2 to 3 seeds maximum cover loosely with soil and water till germination once the true leaves start appearing then the first set of leaves that appears on any plant are not the true leaves they are the cotyledons they are the power house or the store where the food is stored of the plant so that's not to be used right that's not considered to be the, after that the not the first two leaves but the second subsequent set of leaves are the true leaves so wait till you have five to six true leaves and by the time you generally have 5 to 6 true leaves in any plant that is 5 to 6 inch tall space out or thin the saplings around 6 inches apart to allow ample space for each plant keep it under direct daytime sun or partial shade so the leaves doesn't get burned especially when we are watering it now the way it is watered over here and uh, it, it is showing water droplets on the leaves and if it happens a harsh sun the harsh afternoon sun happens to fall on this the leaves will burn and we can of course pluck the leaves whenever needed and leaves will continue to regrow until the end of season so just cut the leaves with the scissor and new sets of leaves will keep on coming radish it grows inside the ground inside the pot so again use a well drained red potting soil and a rich organic homemade compost mixed with cocoa peat sow the seeds by making dents of 0.5 inches into the soil at a gap of 1 inch once the seed germinate in about a week separate the seedlings 2 to 4 inches apart ideally potting containers around 20 liters should be used for growing the long and wide variety of indigenous radish the one local to you add compost after about a week water regularly harvest after about a month radish leaves are also consumed as a delicious 
uh, curry in Bengali cuisine or a dry accompaniment in Gujarati cuisine also. Capsicum, best time to sow is late winter, spring or beginning of summer. It thrives well in moderate temperature. The soil I'm not repeating. Watering schedule, you have to follow strictly because any excess watering, overwatering, the plant will die. The fruit will not be of good quality. Use organic fertilizer every two weeks, preferably water soluble, which you can get it from the market. Fresh capsicum will grow fully in 60 to 90 days. Carrots. So again, according to the size of container, you choose a variety which doesn't is not too long a variety because the pot will not have ample space. The short variety you can go for. You can use compost, cover the seeds with half inch or one third centimeter of wet soil. Now the seeds will take one to three weeks to sprout. So this is a time we'll have to be very, very patient. Generally, we tend to lose patience after one week. So keeping, keep on spraying water on it. Keep the soil moist at all time. If you are in hot climate, this means watering your carrot plant daily. Just be sure not to wash away the fragile seeds or harm the sprouting saplings by too much of water pressure. So spray very lightly, no jet spray, very kindly. Apply mulch around the sprouting seeds. Add a few inches of leaf, bark, hay, mulch the ground, the seeds to seal the moisture in. Pull out the weeds that develop through the mulch by hand. Do so gently not to disturb the carrot roots because the root is the fruit here. Fine, so that's all about carrot. The same thing will be sent to you on the WhatsApp group for you have to detail study about it. So this is how a carrot plant grow. This I showed you. Yeah, that's from the previous. Yeah, that's my brinjal plant. That's my capsicum, lettuce, chickpea, chili, tomato. Thank you. So yes, now you can have your unmuted. I'll just go to the chat about the various queries that I have. What should we spray on the plants? Don't spray anything on the plants for ant. Uh, line the sides of the pot with vinegar. So if you have vinegar, market pot or cone vinegar. So with the smell of the vinegar, vinegar with the third of and so, or you can also sprinkle salt around or turmeric around it. Another very good thing to the ants is cucumber peels. So eat cucumber for salad and use the peels to deter the ants. So the ants kept around the pot. It won't be effective after half a day when they dry off. Keep the peel inside the pot as a mulch. And next day, again, line it with the cucumber. This is really effective in deterring the ants away. Vinegar would help you with lots of ants around the pot. Keep on every day pouring vinegar around the pot. So that would deter the smell of vinegar would deter the ants away. Peanuts grow under the soil. How to ensure that the summer heat does not burn the leaves of the plant? Not to water on the leaves. No water on the leaves. And if it is happening that the sun is very intense and the plants are getting burnt, even though the plants are dry. So, but the thin muslin, cover it. Cover the plant, the top. Just put a simple, uh, small, very light muslin cotton cloth on it. That will help you out. Lemon don't fruit easily when grown through the seeds. The, every, every plant has its maturity period. It's generally three to four years. That's why. But fail, so you have to be really, really patient for that. So Dr. Vanna, so if you have a patience, so better get a, a ready-made plant from the nursery, which is already four years old, and the fruits will come. The flowers are already there. The fruits will be there earlier. How to get rid of the millibugs? The millibugs are... I'll send you a link for that. It's there on my page. If you go to my uh, Facebook page of Urban Gardening Workshop, it has been uh, explained in detail. You take nowadays everyone in our house has sanitizers, right? So if you have a sanitizer without glycerin, so it's only ethyl alcohol. So take it on the cotton and clean it. You need to clean it daily till the time the millibugs doesn't come. 
And one of the another reason for mealybugs is the soil is derived of the nutrients. If the soil doesn't have rich nutrients, the mealybugs appears on the plant on its own. How to avoid oil and sun plants, as I've explained, how to mealybugs, which vegetable can we grow in the season? I have, I think, uh, given the albanic for the plants on the group today. So if you're a member of the group, please go through that. So you will get the idea. Produce lots of chili over the last two years. Why should I? When should I uproot them and discard? When it stops giving them, if it's giving chili, enjoy. Two years, I think, maybe the third year, the yield will go, up, go down. Has. They are not producing much now. So it's the time the life is over. The maximum life is two years. Maximum is three years. Two years is the peak. Third year, it won't be so. So now just you can discard it. You can just let it dry off, chop it into small, small pieces and put it in the soil of the new plant at the bottom and fill it with the soil on the top. So that will act as a nutrient for the new plant. If we should not put water on the leaves, how do we wipe the dirt on it? You spray it in the evening after sunset. Right, so after sunset, so by morning, before the sunlight comes, the water would have dried off and you're not going to pour, jet spray it. So the water doesn't stay. How long will I, how will I be able to make the time? The leaves will start drying, the flowers will come and the flowers will dry off and fall off and the leaves will also start drying off. So just that bigger, soil a little and come, it will come up to the top of the pot. I hope I have answered all the queries. Yes, you are all are welcome. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for joining today. Any other queries? You want your, anybody wants me to ask anything else? I'm there available. Or we can just thank you very much for joining. You all can leave. That's it for the day. Thank you so much.